Hello, my musical scholars. It's time for another music lesson. So glad to be with you again. As you know, I'm going to start with a devotion. And today we're going to do just a little bit of review and learn about some instruments and have some special Thanksgiving songs as well. So that's what we'll be doing today. And we are going to get started with our devotion which is entitled, The Fruit of the Spirit. I'm going to read a little bit for you, give you the scripture verse, very short prayer, and of course, a song. What kind of fruit grows on an apple tree? Apples, of course. An apple tree only produces apples. It cannot produce oranges, even if it wanted to. Likewise, when we become Christians, Jesus produces fruit in us. It's called the fruit of the Spirit. This fruit is the love, joy, and peace that only Jesus can produce in us. Many people try to find lasting joy and peace without loving Jesus. They think that other things in this world can replace his love. We know that apple trees can only produce apples. And only Jesus can produce in us the kind of fruit that fills a heart with love, joy, and peace. So think about it. Jesus helps us to produce those fruits. In us, and we're going to hear about some of those in the song in just a little bit. But you heard about love, joy, and peace. Wait till you hear about the others. So here's our scripture verse from Galatians. Chapter 5, verse 22. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace. And our short prayer for today. Lord, I am attached to Jesus. Thank you for producing fruit in me. Amen. So I'm going to show you the words now for this song, The Fruit of the Spirit. And let's find out what some of those fruits are. Here we go. The fruit of the fruit of the spirit is yes, the fruit of the fruit of the spirit is love and joy, joy and peace, peace and patience and kindness to gentleness, faithfulness, self-control and goodness for you. it's such a short song I'm going to play it one more time. Try to sing along. Imagine if we had all of those fruits of the Spirit in us all the time, what amazing people we would be. Let's all just try to choose one of those this week, whether it's love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, gentleness, faithfulness, self-control, or goodness, 
choose one of those and really work on it this week. Thank you. Now, we go to our music. We're going to do a little bit of review right here. I've been showing you my flashcards the last few weeks. And when I hold one up, I want you to think in your mind, if you're by yourself, of course, you can shout it out. But if you're in a class, think. And I'll give like about three or four seconds, and then I will say the answer, and you check and see if you got it right. We've been, we've been talking about these, so I'm going to start with this one right here. Staff. Remember, that's where all our music signs and symbols, our music notes, they all go on the staff, five lines and four spaces. Trouble clef. Instruments that are higher, they have to see this treble clef in their music. Instruments that play down low or voices, they are going to see a bass clef. So we've got treble clef, high, bass clef, low. Hope you got those right. Let's go for another one. I'll point to what I want you to say. Bar line. Bar line. This is going to divide the staff. Just like a wall would divide a house, the bar line is going to divide the staff. And when I turn this card over, from one bar line to the next bar line is a measure. I almost gave it away and I started forming the letter M with my lips, but measure. This is like a room on a staff, but we call it a measure. Double bar line tells us stop, the music is over. Double bar line. Now, here we go. When I say three, I'll count to three. I want you to think in your mind, what is this called? And how many counts does it get? One, two, three. And it is a whole note, four counts. One, two, three. Half note. Two counts. One, two, three. Quarter note. One count. Now that's review. We've been talking about this for several weeks, but now I'm going to go to something that we learned last week. People who write music, composers, when they want people who are singing or playing instruments to take a break for a little bit, for one count, two counts, maybe four counts. Instead of writing in a note, they're going to write in something called a rest. And so this is called the Howell rest. The box is underneath the line. Howell rest. How many counts does a whole rest get? right same as a whole note I'm gonna go to oh we talked about this this is our half note I'm gonna turn the card over and now we have a half rest how many counts does it get two same as a half note it gets two and finally our last one this is review this is our Mm, I'm not going to tell you. You're thinking it in your mind. It's a quarter note. So when I turn the card over, this is a quarter rest. How many counts? That's it. One. There's your review. Pretty easy. When you think about it every single week, pretty soon it's going to become as easy as the ABCs are to you when we do that all the time.
Well, that's our musical notes. Now we're going to go to some musical instruments. I want to talk about some stringed instruments. My guitar is a string instrument. That's right, but you're almost never going to hear this in an orchestra. You're going to hear string instruments, and I'm going to talk about them. If you had a workbook in front of you, I would have you play a little game. But I wrote these in, and I'm going to talk about these instruments today. These are our string instruments in the orchestra. So I'm going to read here, and I'm going to refer to letter A, letter B, letter C, or letter D. And I'm sure you can see that they go from small to large. Let's learn about them. Instrument A is called a violin. Now, I'm gonna stop right there because perhaps some of you have never heard of violin. Maybe you're going, mm, I think I know what it sounds like, but it would be better if I heard it. So I'm gonna cue up my music right now, and I'm going to play just a little snippet, just a few, probably about eight <coughs> seconds, where you get to hear what a violin sounds like. <coughs> That is the violin, instrument A, smallest of these stringed instruments. Instrument B is called a viola. It's a little bit bigger than a violin. Still has a higher sound. Here's what the viola sounds like. than the violin. Instrument C is called a cello. I know it says C-E-L-L-O and it's pronounced with the C-H sound. Cello. Here's what a cello sounds like. Instrument D is called a bass violin. Sometimes you will also hear it called the double bass. Double bass. So this is the largest. The violin is the smallest. The bass violin is the largest. Listen to this low sound. low sounding instrument. Well, let's learn a little bit about how we have to play them. Instruments A and B, violin and viola, both rest beneath the chin while being played. Instruments C and D stand on the floor. They have a special peg on the bottom here. All these instruments have four strings. So the smaller of these instruments, violin and viola, make higher sounds. And when the larger instruments, cello and bass violin, they make lower sounds. These instruments are played using a bow, but they can also be played by plucking the strings with the musician's finger. These four instruments are called string instruments and they make up most of a large symphony orchestra. What I'd like to do for you right now is play a song that features our violin and our cello. I'm gonna tell you, if I had to pick one of my favorite of these four instruments, I think it would be the cello. I love the rich sound of the instrument and I 
do know somebody who plays cello and every time he plays it I'm just oh it's just so so beautiful so I'm going to play this song called the night herding song you're going to see the words in just a moment cue up my music here so you can see those words and actually it will tell you when the violin is playing and it will tell you when the cello is playing and when they are playing together cello. Now we hear both of them. Violin. Cello. I love how we hear the violin playing the melody and the cello playing the harmony. I love those stringed instruments. Well, I'm going to go back to one of my pictures here so we can just talk a little bit about the parts of the instruments. All of the stringed instruments are made out of wood, the violin, the viola, the cello, and the string bass, or the double bass, or bass violin. It's known by all those names. And I'm going to point out here that I have the bass violin and the violin. And they have some of the same parts. At the top, they have a wooden piece called the scroll. They have pegs here that you have to turn in order to make the strings go higher or lower. They have a, a neck, a pretty long neck. They've got four strings. Remember I told you that before, four strings. They have a bridge. The strings go over that and attach to to the bass violin or the violin. Now, something that's different, the violin has the chin rest, it rests underneath the chin, where the bass violin has to stand on a floor peg. If you play a bass violin, you're either going to sit on a higher stool or you're going to stand up. It's it's pretty tall, pretty tall instrument, so in order to play that, you will have to do that. With a viola, it also has a chin rest, but the cello has the floor peg, and you usually sit on a chair to play the cello. And of course, we've got to have the holes where the sound comes out on both the violin and the bass violin. And you will notice here, if you had the workbook, you'd be doing a very simple dot to dot to make a bow. And sometimes we can also use our finger to pluck the strings of the violin. Now I did want to point out something, that my guitar has some of the similarities, not all of them, because again, my guitar is not going to be on the floor, it doesn't have a floor peg, but it has the sound hole where the sound comes out. It's also made out of wood, like those. It has strings, but I have six strings. It has a bridge that helps to hold the strings in place, and it also has tuning pegs, and when I turn these, it makes the strings go higher or lower. So there are some similarities, and there are also some differences. Maybe someday you'll get to play one of these stringed instruments. That would be great. You could be a member of an orchestra, play violin, viola, cello, or string bass, or you could also play a guitar. 
it's really cool with guitars because they're easy to carry around and you can also sing along with them. Now, we just learned about some instruments. We did our review with our musical notes. Let's have some fun now with some Thanksgiving songs. I'm going to ask my cameraman to shoot me my uh, wonderful, yeah, my turkey. You know, let's get in the mood. Here's my turkey. I've got him sitting on my kitchen table just to remind me that Thanksgiving is coming. Now, the first song that I'd like to play for you is called The Pumpkin Pie Polka. I love, I love that. The polka is a dance. And so that's why when you see the words in just a moment, you're going to see some pictures, some cartoon pictures of two pieces of pie dancing with each other. It's just a fun song talking about some of the food that maybe you'll be eating on Thanksgiving. Maybe not. Maybe maybe you love pumpkin pie. Maybe you love sweet potato pie. Maybe you don't like any of those. Maybe you like mashed potatoes. Well, let's listen to the song first, okay? So here we go. Pumpkin pie, polka. You're going to have the words in front of you. <coughs> just a fun song and maybe you heard an instrument in the background called the accordion and when you look at your music there's a little cartoon character on the bottom and he is playing an accordion or sometimes they call it a squeeze box because you have to push it in and pull it out in order to make a sound. All right let's go to another fun song. I love these Thanksgiving songs and I guarantee you're going to like this one because this one is called Hip Hop Turkey. Let's see what makes him the Hip Hop Turkey. Here we go. You've got the words for it. Follow along. It's a lot of fun. <coughs>
All right, just a fun song. And by the way, in case you were wondering, what is a waddle? It's that little red thing uh, right by the turkey's throat. You can see it on my stuffed turkey right here. That's what's called a waddle, just in case you were wondering. I hope you had fun with those Thanksgiving songs. Next week, I'm going to have a couple more. It's just fun to sing along and learn some new things. I hope you learned some new things about our string instruments. Well, for sure, you learned where a waddle was on a turkey and reviewed some of our musical signs and symbols. So, my friends, until we meet again, stay safe, stay healthy, and God bless all of you. Goodbye.